you can see okay. that this woman has sort of a uh, different eyebrows. Well, I don't want to be difficult here, but I feel I'm an expert. I look for other things besides just face. I look at the clothes, I look at the background, I check. Yes, so do I. Like and subscribe right now or this spider will crawl on your face in your sleep. Pawn Stars is probably one of the most entertaining scams that's been running for over a decade now. It's fascinating how Rick and his son always managed to bargain with their customers, but there were also some deals that went terribly for them. Welcome to Trend Mix, where we get in the mix with the craziest deals, and here are the top 8 angry customers on Pawn Stars and their bad deals. Let's jump in. Bronze Pegasus Statue Emile Louise Picoult's bronze Perseus and Pegasus sculpture from 1888 was a limited edition. Only 800 were made and is the artist's most famous work. So when a mustachioed seller comes in asking $6,000 to sell one, Rick's eyes lit up. But since there are millions of fakes in the art world according to Rick, he inspects it first and immediately finds a Made in the USA stamp on the bottom. It is obviously a 20th century recast made after Picoult died in 1915. After receiving the news, the seller goes ballistic accusing Rick of incompetence. Things get heated enough that security comes over, but Rick waves them off. Rick's father, Pawn Star's legendary old man, who has since passed away, steps in to cool things off calmly, thanking the man for bringing in the item but saying they're not interested. With sculpture in hand and security keeping an eye on him, the seller knows there isn't going to be any deal, so he storms out. There's some pity right here. And that crack right there is from when they casted it. It didn't happen later. If it's an original, the casting will all be right. Oh, no. I believe this was recast probably around 40, 50 years ago, long after Picoult died. Pete Rose Baseball Cards An authentic 1967 Pete Rose baseball card in mint condition could be worth a lot of money, and five of them? That could be nothing short of a windfall for the right seller. That's why Big Hoss is suspicious when a guy comes in with just that. Five mint condition 1967 tops card that are, in Haas's opinion, in too perfect shape. The seller says he'll have to reevaluate his entire collection if these turn out to be fake. Big Haas calls over Rick. Rick takes one look at them and says they're junk. The picture is overexposed and blurry. It looks like someone scanned in an original and then reprinted on an inkjet printer. They're worth absolutely nothing. Once outside, the apparently disillusioned seller questions his whole existence. If these cards are fake, what else is real? Is the wife real? The dog? The cat? What's real? Guess he's going home to take a second look at his card collection, among other things. You know, there's some names in there that sound familiar, but no one I recognize. Okay. Well, let me see what we yeah, have I here. I know the autographs are authentic because it says that on there, but they don't grade them. What do you think about the condition? That's a good thing these are graded. Corners, creasing, writing on the backs. Babe Ruth's Bat and Glove. The legendary Babe Ruth is one of the best known sports stars of all time, so memorabilia signed by him should fetch a pretty penny. That's what one no-nonsense seller believes when he walks through the pawn shop doors with a signed baseball bat and glove. Between the two items, he's hoping to get $120,000. When Rick says he wants to bring in an expert, the seller gruffly asks, who is your guy and what makes him special? To which Rick calmly explains he knows and trusts the experts, while he doesn't know the seller from the hole in the wall. Right off the proverbial bat, the seller's authentication papers makes the expert nervous, and for good reason. The person who signed the papers was implicated in an FBI sting exposing fraudulent signatures and memorabilia. Therefore, auction houses won't accept the signature as legitimate. Rick raises his eyebrows in surprise and has serious doubts about the validity of the items, which immediately shuts down the deal. After leaving the shop without a sale, the frustrated seller questions if the so-called expert even knew who Babe Ruth was. I just want someone who's in this business to look at this paperwork to see what they think. Signed gloves are extremely rare because the oils in the glove can over time kill the signature. The gentleman listed on this authentication was implicated in this enormous FBI sting operation in the late 1990s. Revolutionary War Era Pistol 
Flintlock pistols were common in colonial America, so when a gun collector walks into the Pawn Stars pawn shop with a pristine one from the 18th century circa the Revolutionary War, Big Hoss is interested in buying it. The seller purchased it for $800 at a gun show, and he calls it the cream of his collection. He's only getting rid of it in the first place because his wife is forcing him to sell it. Before handing over any money, Big Hoss calls an arms and armor expert to come check it out, you know, just in case. There's no authentication paper, but if it's legit, the experts say it could be worth up to $2,500. The seller responds by knowingly smiling and nodding his head. But as soon as the expert looks at the pistol, he says it's a reproduction, as it's missing certain markings and isn't hand-graved. You're sure, asks the dumbfounded seller who purses his lips and shakes his head in disbelief. Big Hoss feels bad for the guy, but doesn't mean he's willing to make an offer. Outside, the seller unloads, storming off while swearing. Uh, there was a seller there who had uh, got it from a estate sale, and I was told that uh, at the estate sale it had been in the family for generations. Lincoln Family Photo. A cocky seller wants one million dollars for a one in a million photo of President Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary from 1863. That would put it right in the middle of Lincoln's historic administration which ran from 1861 to 1865. But Rick isn't sure it's real so he calls in an expert. She wears white gloves and uses facial comparison software to compare the seller's photo with an authenticated photo. Mary's facial features did not match, among other things, so she declares it a fake. The seller doesn't take the news well, belligerently saying he considers himself more of an expert on the subject than the actual expert. When she defends her record of spotting fakes and sticks to her guns that the photo isn't authentic, the seller snarkily declares, it's your career, you have the right to discredit yourself. After watching the exchange in disbelief, Rick takes the word of the renowned expert over the sulky seller and refuses to make an offer. But you can see that this woman has sort of a uh, different eyebrows. Well, I don't want to be difficult here, but I feel I'm an expert. I look for other things besides just face. I look at the clothes, I look at the background, I check. Yes, so do I. John Lennon Artwork. John Lennon was a well-known doodler who attended art school before founding the legendary Beatles, and he often gave away his drawings for free. So it's not far-fetched to believe a seller may have walked into the gold and silver pawn shop with a collage of doodles that resemble Lennon's famous artwork, a haphazardly hand-drawn self-portrait, and it's signed. The seller found it hanging in a thrift shop and bought it for $10, total steal. Now he's hoping it's worth about $20,000 at the pawn shop. While Rick calls the find neat, he immediately spots a problem with the alleged artifact. From the back, he can tell it's been printed on Kodak printer paper, which didn't even exist at the time of Lennon's tragic death in 1980. So while it's cool, unfortunately for the owner, it's also a complete fake. Trying to stay optimistic about the bus, the seller says he's glad he didn't pay a lot for it in the first place. That's a no nine panel self-portrait that he did, you know, and so. This is Kodak computer paper. He passed away in 1980. This type of paper didn't exist in 1980. It's 100% fake. Miro's etching. A piece of Joan Miro's artwork once fetched $37 million at an auction. So when someone walks in with one, Chumley gets excited. The artist happens to be one of Chum's favorite, which makes him more knowledgeable than usual. While the seller would like to get $12,000 for it, Chumley thinks the signature looks questionable. It's lacking fluidity, as if someone had forged it. He's one of the most faked artists around, says Chum. Cue in the art expert, whose presence makes the seller nervous because he's not sure the etching is genuine. Upon inspection, it looks like an original print. And for a brief moment, the seller is beaming. But the signature seems like a forgery. The expert's final opinion? It's a real Miro's etching with a fake signature, and he tells Chumley to avoid purchasing it. Defeated, the seller says he'll probably just keep it and hang it on his wall. The thing is, even though his artwork is worth a lot of money, he's one of the most faked artists around for this period of time. Like, his signature is faked a lot. And I'm not a signature expert, but signature looks a little iffy to me. It kind of looks like stop and go, stop and go. Baroque Cross. 
Jewelry always sells well at the Pawn Stars Pawn Shop, so Rick is intrigued when a young man comes in with a 300-year-old 15-carat gold and rose diamond cross. He's looking to get $8,000 for it. Rick immediately recognizes it as Baroque style, which was popular in the 17th and 18th centuries, and says jewelry from that time period can sell for millions of dollars. He carefully inspects the piece with a magnifying glass and sees no hallmarks of it being genuine, including the gold being two different colors. In fact, it looks like someone soldered it together, and blow torches didn't exist in the 1600s. It's clearly not 300 years old. The seller disagrees with Rick's appraisal and says he's going to get a second opinion. And that's pretty much it for today. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you're always updated with our latest uploads. See y'all next week and goodbye.